Hello, everyone. Could you help me please welcome up Boaz from Orca to the stage? Howdy, folks. Great to be back at another Hacker House, or Hey, as they like to say here. Uh, if you are hearing my voice, but you're not actually in the arena, I know you're out there, all safely ensconced on a secret lab gaming chair, and I'm sure it's very comfortable, but the reason we do do these Hacker Houses is because things are better in person rather than through a screen. So if you can hear me and you're not in the arena, please come to the arena. I love how it's called the arena, actually. I feel like uh, we should have fights here or something. <laughs> Fight Club down? Someone's probably tried it. Maybe at the next Hacker House. I don't think the Foundation would be too, too happy with that idea. Um, yeah, well, uh, while I wait a little bit, just in case anybody is uh, heading over. Stockholm is uh, fantastic. Big props to the Solana Foundation for hosting this. It is a great city. I came here a couple of years ago. I don't know if any of you guys remember there was this whole COVID thing and uh, things got very strange. So I went to Sweden just so I could go to the pub because they shut them all in the UK. It was very, very depressing. Uh, going to the pub is probably the closest thing I've got to uh, going to church. So I was very glad that they kept them open in Sweden and I had a fantastic time. All manner of uh, Embarrassing experiences were trying, to, trying in vain to understand what is written on the card machine or to hear what someone else said to me in front of uh, shockingly attractive Swedish women. Very fond memories indeed. But, you know, uh, one of the worst parts of looking like this is that Swedish people speak to you in Swedish. And while I may be tall and blonde and I like snus, uh, I have no idea what you're saying. But, thankfully, lots of English speakers in Sweden. Just as a general, uh, general guide, could I get a show of hands as to how many people here are Swedish? One, two, three, nine. Quite a few, quite, quite a few Swedes, or people who look Swedish anyway. I think, uh, you know, the biggest problem in Stockholm is the cost of beer here. It is absolutely criminal. This is obscene. And all you Swedes, it's nothing personal, but you need to figure it out. We are the millennial generation. We're meant to be uh, fixing all the, all the problems caused by the baby boomers. So you guys, you need to, you need to get it sorted, because otherwise I probably would live in Sweden. But otherwise, you know, I can see why you got such a massive welfare state here. You go bankrupt after like two rounds of drinks. Not very, uh, yeah, not very good for your wallet. But is Stockholm is Stockholm. Ultimate is good for your wallet. <laughs> All right, I should probably get started now uh, rather than just uh, rambling on about booze prices. My name is Boaz Shoshan. I am from the Orca team. Uh, we are a automated market maker in the Solana ecosystem. I know a lot of you guys are quite green, so we'll go over some of the basics before we get into the fun stuff. Uh, of course, Orca, this is our main tagline, DeFi for people, not programs. DeFi for people includes everyone who is using it. So this is software engineers as well as users and traders, which is what we'll, we'll get to in a little bit. We were started in February 2021, so we're relatively new. However, we have just passed $30 billion in volume that has passed through our smart contract. So pretty good going thus far. Uh, these are the two co-founders, Utaro and Grace. Uh, very good pedigree. Uh, Yutaro was one of the main contributors to Ethereum back in the day, worked with Vitalik. Meanwhile, Ori, Grace Kwan, has a, uh, a great background when it comes to design and very strong user experience, which, as I'm sure quite a few of you know, uh, you know, in Web3, there's still a fair bit to go when it comes to user experience. There's a lot of uh, room to be uh, room to be explored when it comes to decent web experience. So in terms of the Orca ecosystem, we are a concentrated liquidity automated market maker. I'll go over what that means in a second. But the main things you can do is trade. So you can swap one Solana token for another. And it doesn't need to be Solana native. It can be an SPL wrapped token. So you can buy Bitcoin or Ethereum through our AMM. And of course, you can farm so you can provide liquidity in our AMM to earn yield. And on top of that, you can then build whatever applications that you want using our smart contract, because it's all open source, as we'll go through. This is just a general guide. This is what it looks like to actually make a swap on Orca in the first place. 
It's actually doing this that got me the job where I am now. So I was, uh, I was working in TradFi before, and I saw this really nice logo on Twitter, and I was like, oh, I'll check this out. Turns out it's a decentralized exchange, or an AMM. And uh, it was such a good, rewarding experience. I was like, damn, I really want to work for this team. And uh, lo and behold, a few days later, they said on their website they were hiring. So I thought, yeah, may as well throw my hat in, and uh, one thing leads to another, and here I am. Just a general gist with what I was saying earlier with DeFi for people, not programs, that includes software engineers. So our SDK is very, very stable. It's very, very easy to integrate with us. So while this is total gibberish to me because I've no coding background, I can still see that that's a pretty small amount of code. But with that, you can integrate entirely with the Orca AMM. So if you want to in integrate inside your app the ability to swap one token for another using Orca, this is really all it takes. And uh, this is something that uh, quite a few projects have done with us recently. Most, uh, most notably would have been Steppen, which drove a huge amount of volume for us. And this comes to the, sort of the, main, the main thrust of what we're doing now. So I said $30 billion in trading volume that we've done since February 2021. $3.7 billion of that have been through whirlpools, which are concentrated liquidity pools. And concentrated liquidity pools are what we are shifting to entirely. So everything on Orca in the near future will be a concentrated liquidity pool. Concentrated liquidity pools are simply much better, more capital efficient forms of liquidity pools. The whole idea, if you're not familiar, if you want to earn some kind of yield, you want to earn uh, money in order, well, money from other people trading with your tokens, you will put it into some kind of liquidity pool. Uh, Uniswap being one of the, the grand forerunners of this, of course, but there are plenty of AMMs in Solana and across the crypto ecosystem where you can do this, but some of them are more efficient than others, and concentrated liquidity pools are much more efficient. Whirlpools, uh, for example, will allow you to concentrate your liquidity in certain ranges. So if you are somebody who has a very strong view as to what the price of, say, Sol will do, you can say, I'm going to concentrate my liquidity in exactly the price range I want. If you're wrong, then you'll have concentrated impermanent loss. But if you're right, you'll earn much, much more in yield. And the users, the traders, will have much lower slippage costs because there's much more liquidity available for them to use. So if you can imagine, with something like Uniswap v2 or many of the other AMMs in Solana, for that matter, when somebody is, uh, is providing liquidity into a certain pool, say USDC Sol, they will give $50 of USDC, $50 of Sol, and then that liquidity will be stretched from zero to infinity, and only a tiny amount of that liquidity will actually be used. So the amount of fees you earn is tiny. With concentrated liquidity, you say exactly where you want the capital to be deployed, and you'll manage to earn much more fees if you're right, and that is where the trading takes place. So in the end, smart LPs make more money, and users get far less slippage, because there's far more liquidity on the table. As said, it's all open source, so you can do whatever you want with it. Dual audited by Neodyme and Kidelsky. And while it was inspired by Uniswap v3, it is a totally new smart, well, totally new custom smart contract. This is what it looks like if you are going to be providing liquidity. So you can see what the liquidity distribution is for the pool that you want. And you can pick where, in the, where across the curve you want to deploy your liquidity. We are updating more features to this because it is quite, uh, quite a difficult task being a concentrated liquidity provider because, well, uh, as we'll go to in the first case here with what's called auto balance, if you're providing concentrated liquidity, well, the amount that you provide of each token depends entirely on what the price range you're supporting. And you might not have exactly that quantity of each uh, in order to just bring to the table immediately, because it'll be very, very specific. What we've rolled out is auto balance. That was just last week, which means that if you do have too much of one token or too much of another, you can just provide all of it. And Orca will automatically just swap out the, the excess tokens for the other, and you'll be able to uh, get started very quickly. What we have here on the right is our new collaboration with Notify. So this is, uh, nobody actually knows about this just yet. You guys are, are getting the early alpha here. Notify are, uh, well, through our integration, Whenever the price of whatever pool that you are uh, deploying liquidity into, whenever that goes out of your range, you'll be notified either through email or through, your, uh, through SMS, through your phone, or through Telegram. And 
yeah, we're, we'll be rolling this out very, very shortly, so in the next week. And this will make things a fair bit easier, though maybe a little more stressful. People who are used to providing liquidity on Uniswap v2 or any other AMMs out there, they kind of like the whole fire and forget thing where you just deploy the liquidity and then you hope you make money at the end of it and you check in every now and then. Being a concentrated liquidity provider, if you are uh, you know, lacking, <laughs> lacking the will or the wits to be a what we would call a shark, it can be very, very difficult. It's not for the faint of heart. It is a very active pursuit. If you ever speak to any of the market makers from somewhere like Wintermute, and you say, you know, market making, that's a pretty, pretty easy job, right? They will, uh, they will probably laugh in your face because it is very difficult. We're used to uh, things being very easy during a bull market, but uh, in a bear market, you need to be a lot smarter. And feature updates like this will help out in that regard. Now, in terms of the builders program, this is something that we rolled out recently and which we are, you know, we're actually cleaning up with giving out all of the grants. So the build builders program, as I said, because the Whirlpool's SDK and the smart contract has all been open sourced, Anyone can do whatever they want with it, and we want to incentivize people to do that. So because Whirlpools is so capital efficient, and we manage to get so much volume through it, it allows lots of other projects who don't want to build their own AMM, who don't want to build their own DEX, to simply integrate and build on top of it, which is very, very uh, simple, I'm told, to do. Though uh, I'm not an engineer, so don't, uh, don't quote me on that one. In terms of what we wanted out of it, so these are some of the things that you can do with Whirlpools, active liquidity management. So being a shark with Whirlpools is very difficult, but maybe there's somebody who you think is really, really intelligent and they're going to be able to do it better than you are. With active liquidity management, effectively someone can open a vault and they can manage liquidity for other users who trust in their strategy. It can also be automated liquidity management. One of the teams we're, uh, we've partnered with for the Builders program, which will be released uh, in due course, is working on artificial intelligence in order to make smart automated uh, liquidity provisioning strategies. Just in terms of uh, anyone who does want to build on it, it's all out there on our developer portal, very easy to use. And of course, we have our Discord where uh, we are very responsive. We do want to help anyone who does, who does want to build on this in any way that we can, which includes in, some, in the case of the Builders program, actually just giving them a load of money. The full extent of the Wave 1 of our, our Builders program, that is, uh, I will be uh, publishing a full list shortly. There are 11 total projects. We're giving away $225,000 to uh, all of these projects combined. Some people think that's, that's not enough. Uh, some people think uh, you know, we should be giving away way more money. But I think uh, you know, if you actually look at a lot of the grants and a lot of the uh, various competitions for money that you do see in the crypto space, while a lot of money is put on the table to begin with, uh, the amount that actually gets distributed is often a lot less. I won't name any names there, but $225,000, well, I, I think it's pretty good. I don't, think, uh, I don't think we hear any complaints. And indeed, there are plenty of people who are actually building on top of Whirlpools without them giving us any money at all. So here we have Hubble, we have Goblin Gold, Viper, very interesting one uh, when it comes to permissionless uh, on-chain derivatives. Autonomy is going to be doing some cool stuff with uh, specific order types. So even though we are pretty advanced when it comes to uh, you know, people trading crypto in general, the, when it comes to order types, we're actually very, very much behind. When you see the kind of things that do take place in TradFi and the kind of sophistication you can bring to the market, we're, we're way away from that. And Hubble's doing some interesting stuff with vaults. Goblin Gold is doing some interesting stuff with aggregation. And of course, we have Tulip, the great Tulip protocol, which is, uh, which is playing around with uh, a lot of the lending collateralized stuff. Independent integration. So these are folks who've actually been building on Whirlpools without us giving them any money. We've got Solvent there, we've got Parcel. Solvent's in the NFT space. Parcel is in fractionalized real estate. And uh, yeah, I don't, don't know about that one. You know, has anyone seen that, that image anywhere before? I just, whenever I go to a bar at any of the hacker houses and I go to the toilet, there's this image just stuck there. I don't know who does it. It's, uh, very nice. I mean, I, I've got one on my hand as well. Uh, where do these come from? But that, of course, is Ultimate, a uh, very interesting project. Lastly, of course, here is, here is our Twitter. We are relatively active on it, though maybe not as active as we would like to be. 
just in general, as a general guide to a lot of the folks at the Hacker Houses, as uh, I have seen a lot of people here I've not seen before, uh, and a lot of them are quite green. You don't know too much about uh, the space, but you're very interested in it. Do make as much of it as you can, because uh, these are really not that common in the crypto space, where you can speak to people who really know what they're talking about and can help you with, uh, with advice or indeed with uh, partnering you up with other developers who are similarly interested. They're fantastic. Last of all, I'm not going to take any questions. Uh, I only do that when there's a beer in my hand, and very lucky for you guys. The beer is free. If you do want any indication that Web3 and the Solana ecosystem is alive and well, look no further than this hacker house where the Solana Foundation has enough money that they can buy free drinks for everybody at this center. Right. There, have you any idea how much money that costs in Stockholm? There have been quite a few people I've spoken to who are foreigners, and they've never been to a bar here before, and they think, uh, oh, you know, it'll just be like anywhere else. And uh, yeah, if that is you, uh, please invite me along when you do go to a bar, because I want to see your face when you get the bill, and you'll probably need assistance in paying the bill as well. You'll probably need to sell all of your NFTs at floor price, just in order to clear it. So yeah, that's uh, all from me at the minute. I uh, hope you did enjoy this to some degree, and uh, I'll see you around at the bar later on. So thank you all very much.